Hey friends, it is Ashton here again with Gin Sense. Today I'm going to be taking a look at my five least favorite purchases of 2016. Now honestly, I find a lot of good in almost everything I buy, and I buy a lot. Um, so yeah, pretty much everything that I have, even things that I will ultimately come to think are just completely average or generic, I can pick out good pieces here and there to say, well, it would work okay here, it would work okay there, it's good for the price, uh, things like that. Uh, but these five, I just ended up regretting. So yeah, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Armoff the Warrior. Um, I saw Armoff getting a lot of hype, uh, mainly for their clones, and so I bought a number of bottles from them, mainly because they're under $20, a lot of them, and the ones that aren't, aren't much more than that. Some of them are pretty good, some of them, even ones that have been hyped, honestly, I don't really like. Um, this is one that hasn't necessarily been hyped, but it is one that I don't really like. Now, it's not that it smells bad necessarily it's just probably the most nondescript generic scent that i have ever smelled ever i wore this legitimately for like five or six days in a row um, just trying to kind of get a, a grasp on it and after every day i couldn't remember what it smelled like it's just completely generic and nondescript and i know it some people say that it bears similarities to Bond number nine. I love New York for him, uh, but for me, it's just bleh. It doesn't smell bad, but it doesn't smell good. It's just kind of there. It's like if you took a scent that was trying to be like Versace Dylan Blue and then made it 50 times more generic that's what the warrior would be which sucks because it's kind of a cool name a little cheesy but i dig it and the little arrow motif with the uh, fake leather wrapped around here is kind of cool but it just doesn't work for me and the performance is also not that great uh, so yeah i do regret it even though this was like a 20 dollars purchase estee lauder beyond paradise I had heard some comparisons to Aqua de Jo, uh, and I saw this on eBay, very cheap, so I went ahead and picked it up. Um, at this point, Aqua de Jo is considered a generic scent, but there's no doubt it's been one of, if not the most popular scents over the past 20 years or more. Uh, but this one just has a really funky, sour, tropical note. It's hard to describe. It just sounds like something that has gone off and rotted legitimately, like rotting tropical fruit. It's not nice or pleasant, and it's not remotely near as nice as Aqua de Jo or Perry Ellis 360 Red or anything else along those lines. I just don't like it very much. And for the price, it, it's not super expensive, but for the price, there are probably 100 colognes that I could name off uh, that are better than this, just all the way around. My best friend, Scorza di Sicilia. I did a review on this and it still stands for $80, no bueno. Um, it doesn't have good projection, it doesn't have good longevity. Uh, it opens with a nice citrusy blast, that goes away pretty quickly. Then you're left with a weird, like, funky sweat skin musk scent that is wholly unpleasant um, and I have not found anyone yet that enjoys the dry down on this one. Um, I mean maybe it's just my skin chemistry but I don't think so. It just doesn't have a good dry down. Another one that I reviewed Perry Ellis Oud Vetiver Royale Absolute. This is the most boring bland vetiver scent that I have ever smelled and I have smelled a lot of them. It's just another one that is completely blah where you spray it on and it just sits there and doesn't really do very much pleasant or exciting or new or anything. It's just a very bland earthy vetiver and it's not 
super expensive, but you can pick up Mugler Cologne for about the same price, which is a nice soapy clean one. You can pick up Guerlain Vetiver, which is a nice classy one. Uh, there are lots of other vetivers in this price range that are better than this one. Lastly, Calvin Klein Reveal. Now, here's the deal. This was $10 at TJ Maxx, and I was like, oh, sweet. $10 for 100 mils of Reveal, that's a great deal. Um, I actually already had a 50 mil of it, uh, so I was like, yeah, I'll go ahead and pick that up for 10 bucks, sure. Uh, but I didn't realize that this is the aftershave. <laughs> uh, still not a terrible deal because it was only $10. The reason I regret it is because I didn't pay enough attention to the box to realize that this was the aftershave and not the eau de toilette. So that's on me. Now I have a 50 mil and a 100 mil aftershave. The scent itself, I actually really like and it performs really well. I'm just bummed that I didn't pay more attention. That's more on me than the purchase itself. All right guys, that's all I've got. Those are my five least favorite purchases from the year. There are others that I kind of wish I hadn't pulled the trigger on, but those are the five that stick out most. And honestly, if I run across something that I think is not very good at all or has next to no redeeming qualities, I'll probably do reviews on those fairly quickly just to get them out there so a lot of people don't end up blind buying it like I did and then hate what they got. Um, but yeah, until next year, those are my five least favorite purchases. Let me know which ones you didn't like that you picked up this year or ones that you kind of regret picking up. There may be some that you regret that I regret too, just not as much as these guys. So until next time, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. <clears throat> it's not my throat, and that's not good. <clears throat> Estee Lauder Beyond Paradise. Uh, I found this for a good deal on eBay through FragranceNet, so I went ahead and picked it up. I had heard that there were some similar. Some, 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 some snake. Weird, musky, rotting skin. Rotting skin. That's freaking horrible, but that's not what I meant to say.